All right, let's get right into it. We're gonna break down one of the hottest, and get this, one of the oldest strategies that's completely taking over Silicon Valley right now. It's called the Forward Deployed Engineer Model. So, picture this. Bob McGrew, who is one of the key guys behind ChatGPT, walks into a conference packed with AI founders. You'd think, right, that they'd all be mobbing him about AI models? Nope, not even close. The one thing every single one of them wanted to talk about was a playbook from his old job at Palantir, a playbook that's two decades old. That was the moment everyone kind of realized, wait a minute, something big is happening here. And we're not talking about some niche little trend. As I'm recording this, if you go to Y Combinator's job board, you'll find over 100 startups hiring for this forward deployed engineer role. Now, just three years ago, that number was basically zero. So what on earth is this job that's just exploded out of nowhere? Okay, let's get to the heart of it. What is a forward deployed engineer or an FDE? Well, it's a role that pretty much takes the standard software playbook and flips it completely on its head. You see, at its core, an FDE is an engineer, a real technical engineer who is boots on the ground, embedded with the customer. Their entire job is to be the human bridge between what the software can do out of the box and what the customer's messy, real-world specific problem actually is. They're not just selling a product, they're literally building this solution right there on site. And this is where things get kind of radical. The whole FDE model pushes back against everything we've been taught about how to scale a software company. The standard way, right, is you find your product market fit, and then you create distance. You automate, you self-serve, you scale. The FDE model says, no, do the opposite. And that really is the core philosophy. Look, if you can build a product where you treat all your customers the same and scale to the moon, that's a gift. You should absolutely do it. But the FTE playbook is for those times when that's just impossible, when the only way you're going to win is by getting radically, uncomfortably closer to your customers' unique problems. To really get why this exists, you have to go back to the beginning. This whole thing wasn't dreamt up in a business school classroom. It was born out of this crazy, almost impossible challenge at a very young Palantir. So it's the mid-2000s. Palantir's mission is to build software for spies, for the intelligence community. The problem? How do you build software for users who literally can't tell you what they do? Every single agency, every single mission, they all had slightly different data, different workflows, different needs. A one-size-fits-all product was just completely dead on arrival. And this was the absolute stroke of genius from Palantir Sham Sankar. Everyone else looked at this problem and saw a high-cost, totally unscalable services company, a consulting firm, basically. But he reframed it. He realized that putting these expensive engineers on site wasn't a cost center. It was the company's most powerful engine for discovering what product to build in the first place. Okay, so theory is great, but how does this thing actually work? Let's break down the nuts and bolts that make the FDE playbook tick. It really comes down to two key teams. First up, you have the Echo team. Think of them as embedded analysts. They often come from the customer's world, they speak the language, and their job is to find the real problem and manage that relationship. Then you have the Delta team. These are your engineers, the ones who parachute in and rapidly build a prototype to solve that problem. Now, finding the right people for this is absolutely crucial. For that Echo team, you don't just want a domain expert. No, you want a heretic. You need someone who knows their industry inside and out, sees that the way things are done is fundamentally broken, and has that rebellious fire to actually go and change it. And the Delta engineer, they're a special breed too. They are not code craftsmen, obsessed with beautiful, perfect abstractions. They are prototypers. They can, and I quote, eat a lot of pain just to get a solution working, and fast. Their code might be messy. It might even get thrown away later. And that's not a failure. That is literally part of the process. Their job is to deliver an outcome, period. And here's how all that messy on the ground work actually turns into a scalable product. This might just be the most brilliant part of the whole model. An FDE goes out and builds a quick, dirty, custom gravel road to solve one customer's immediate problem. Then back at HQ, the core product team watches what's working, they learn from it, and then they generalize that solution into a beautiful, reusable, paved superhighway, a robust feature that every future customer gets to use. So as you can imagine, this completely changes how you think about pricing. You can just throw your per seat licenses and usage-based tiers right out the window. With the FTE model, you're not selling a piece of software. You are selling an outcome. It all feeds into this classic business strategy, land and expand. 
The idea is you start small, you get in the door, solve one critical problem, maybe you even lose money on that first project. But by delivering a real, tangible result, you earn their trust. You earn the right to tackle bigger, harder, more valuable problems inside that same company. And that's how the contracts grow over time. Which, you know, brings us all the way back to the beginning. If this model is 20 years old, why now? Why is it suddenly the playbook that every hot AI startup wants to run? Well, for the longest time, the rest of Silicon Valley just kind of wrote this whole strategy off. They looked at it and said, yeah, that's a weird, unscalable beast. It's a one-off that only works because Palantir sells to the government with its giant budgets. It was basically a don't try this at home model. But then AI happened. And all of a sudden, today's AI startups are facing the exact same set of challenges that Palantir did back in the day. Think about it. AI is a brand new market. There's no incumbent product you're just trying to make 10% better. There's a massive amount of product discovery that still needs to be done. And that discovery, it can only happen from the inside, deep within a customer's unique data, their unique workflows. And here's maybe the most powerful way to think about the moment we're in right now. Think of a company like OpenAI as the home product team. They're building the giant, powerful, general-purpose platform. And all these thousands of AI startups, they're the forward deployed engineers. They're the ones out in the wild, figuring out how to actually turn that raw power into real-world value. So it really leaves us with this fascinating question to chew on. In this new age of AI, as we're all building on top of these incredible new platforms, who is your most important customer? Is it the person at the very end of the line, or is it actually the engineer, the FDE, who is the essential human bridge required to cross that final, crucial gap to get any adoption at all? 